I think that nowadays uh, we are living in an era where the technology is improving very fastly compared to what happened in uh, hundreds of years in the shipping industry. I think that uh, the digitalization is for sure one of the biggest opportunities that we are going to experience. So the possibility of uh, gathering a lot of data is coming from uh, from sensors coming from uh, uh, the engines. Uh, opening this data and sending ashore is for sure one of the biggest opportunity that uh, we have uh, and one of the biggest challenges also for the future because of course uh, then once we have uh, this huge amount of data we have to make a proper analysis uh, in order to uh, increase the performance uh, in terms of safety but also in, in terms of uh, let's say energy consumption and uh, also we will have to deal with some, uh, let's say, safety threats, like for example, uh, the cyber security. I must say that as RINA we started uh, over four years ago with the acquisition of a software house that is very active uh, in creating asset management and performance monitoring system. The name uh, of uh, this company is IB and uh, the software tool that we have developed together is InfoShip. That is a software that we have installed uh, on over uh, 200 ships uh, from container vessel uh, to rural passengers and cruise ships uh, with the aim of uh, uh, gathering a lot of uh, data for subsequent uh, analysis ashore. So this is the first uh, thing, best practice that we recommend to use is of course to go on with the digitalization. The second one is to go beyond the rules. So not only to stop to the traditional safety rules that are in the shipping since many years, but to look also to other industries, in particular the oil and gas industry that are more based on gold-based standards and to concept of risk mitigation. So the idea is not to have something ready to fight a problem when it happens, but to have in place a policy of best practices that will reduce at the minimum the possibility of the occurrence and in particular of a reoccurrence of such a problem. So working on risk assessment based standards is something that again we recommend. And the third one is of course the human element because we don't have to, to forget that okay we will have the most technological and advanced ships but Technology is changing, so also the people on board need to stay uh, at the same level, need to follow the technology. There are always new set of rules and regulations, uh, and uh, of course uh, the, having a, a crew that is not only qualified, but is really competent, so a crew that is really good in doing what is required to be done for his role, being a chief engineer, a chief mate, is really something of paramount importance to us. And that's why we have investing in creating academies worldwide that will take care to assess the crew, not only the crew, but also the personal ashore, because it's also important how you supervise the vessel and how you monitor and you manage the vessel from an owner or a ship manager perspective and so enhancing a system to manage the competencies of people on board and people ashore and making a training strategy with very clear KPIs to be monitored and to be reached. I think that, uh, of course, the, uh, the green aspects is one of the most important in the, la in the latest years and uh, it's really the, these regulations are really the ones that are driving the change in the last period if we think to the air emissions, ballast water management and so on. But I think one of the, maybe the top priority that we have to keep in mind nowadays is the ship recycling because uh, uh, we have more and more, let's say, um, public opinion and uh, uh, interest journalists and people that is starting thinking on how these uh, high technological ships uh, come to the end of their life. There is more and more uh, thinking and more and more, uh, let's say, uh, people that are expressing sometimes uh, their, uh, the fact that they don't like very much to have these vessels uh, that are beached somewhere and uh, with uh, people from the third world uh, trying to, to go there and, uh, and work in, uh, in very unpleasant conditions. So from the point of view of uh, new regulations that we have uh, to consider. I think uh, that uh, the ship recycling, uh, the Hong Kong Convention, is really something that for the next future we will have to take into consideration. And in particular as RINA we have started uh, 
issuing certificates of compliance to the Hong Kong Convention to several shipyards in India and Bangladesh, but also in Italy we have issued the first certificate on compliance with the EU regulation on, uh, on ship recycling and uh, is really something that uh, we deem important for, uh, uh, for the future of shipping. Uh, the other one, of course, is uh, saving fuel. Saving fuel is always something that remains very important because, of course, with the new energy efficiency design index, uh, the new MRV monitoring that are coming into force, uh, uh, being able of uh, uh, having on board uh, technologies that allow you, first of all, uh, to do energy management and, and saving is something important. And again, I will also look to different industries that now are working on renewables. Uh, and we have to understand that in, in this different industry at the end, uh, the role of uh, the storage capacity where to store the energy is becoming more and more important. In the shipping for the future, this will be the same. So I think that also the role played by the batteries in the future, very large batteries, is something that will become of uh, paramount importance. Together, uh, coming back to the digitalization, to, let's say, a proper uh, fleet uh, performance monitoring, uh, online monitoring, because, of course, at the end, uh, what you measure, you manage. You cannot talk about, uh, let's say, making saving if, at the end, uh, you cannot monitor day by day exactly what you are, what type of fuel and uh, to which extent uh, you are creating, uh, let's say, pollution with CO2 emission produced by the fuel that you are burning. And again, as RINA, with this uh, InfoShip Energy Governance software tool, uh, we are now working with over uh, 200 installations on board the ships uh, with this uh, energy governance uh, software tool that with the trim optimization, speed optimization tools, uh, is helping the owners not only to manage and control the performance of their fleet, but also to reduce the fuel consumption. I think the industry is getting ready to 2020. Uh, the shipping industry is, of course, has a, a lot of solutions uh, that uh, can pick up. Now, one of the biggest uh, question marks is, of course, uh, the type uh, of fuels and the real quantity of fuels that will be available with uh, such characteristics. So, of course, uh, there will be also to, to be understood uh, what the, the, the industry, what the refineries are going uh, to produce by the time in order to have, a, a, let's say, a clear picture of which will be the real spread between 0.5% uh, fuels and what we have uh, nowadays. Of course, for existing ships, we think that the scrubbers uh, is really one of the most viable options uh, for uh, new vessels. Alternative fuels uh, like LNG uh, is probably one of the best options. So we are experiencing more and more projects uh, being designed uh, either for a dual fuel propulsion or at least for uh, an LNG gas ready uh, classification notation so that later on uh, they can uh, retrofit having already all the spaces in place. Of course, as RINA, we are very much into this because now we are uh, doing the classification of the biggest uh, ever built uh, cruise ships uh, fueled with LNG at uh, Meyerwerf for the, for the Carnival brand and we are also involved in, uh, in other projects for, uh, uh, in particular for ferries, for uh, LNG fueled uh, uh, ferry boats. And of course batteries, as I said before, will also play a role for sure in reducing uh, the consumption and so at the end, uh, let's say, reducing also the, the amount of fuel that, uh, that is going to be, to be, to be burned. Of course, uh, this is one of the most uh, challenging uh, convention that was ratified and entered into force so far. This is something that uh, we are experiencing day by day. Uh, first of all, we have to consider that we have a very, still a very limited number of uh, systems that are uh, approved by IMO and uh, by the USA. Uh, so that's why, the reason why some analysts believe that uh, uh, the installation of ballot water system it will be something unfeasible for some older ships and so will somehow help also the scrapping activities in the future three, four years. I guess that now we, are, we have to wait July when there will be the new MEPC uh, decision uh, and so understanding which will be their position in terms uh, of delaying the, the full implementation and the installation of the treatment system. So far what we are experiencing is, is that already some flag administration are keeping a different position in uh, the 
the harmonization of uh, uh, the IOPP survey of the MARPOS certificate. Some of them uh, will allow only uh, to do a renewal of the MARPOS certificate. Some other will, will request in any case to do the full renewal of the classification. In some cases, in any case, they are already stating that they will not go, well, let's say, beyond 2020. So um, I think the shipping industry, what need is certainty. Uh, we have seen uh, in the last 10 years that we were able uh, to, to overcome all, uh, let's say, difficulties and uh, even uh, difficult regulations when they are sustainable and when everything is feasible, in particular when there is a, a uniform uh, framework uh, all over the world uh, is something that can be always managed. The ballast water, the big problem is still is something with very few manufacturer approved and uh, very different uh, at the end interpretation according to the national, various national regulations. So this is of course what is making it so challenging for our industry.